The Oasis was created by James Halliday, and what he left behind changed everything. A contest. Three impossible challenges. The first to finish gets complete control of the Oasis, which means complete control of the future. The contest has got to be about connecting with someone, connecting with the world. So we take it together? I know that there was talk of a movie before you'd even kind of published the book, but did you think it was kind of possible to you know, bring it all to life like this? Well, I did not, you know. The, um, uh, it wasn't until I sold the movie rights, uh, uh, which wasn't even something I attempted. You know, I sold the book and I always wanted to try to get it published as a book, but there was so much interest in a bidding war over the book that that got the uh, attention of Hollywood and then uh, there was a bidding war over the film rights. And uh, it wasn't until that moment that the, they sold to Warner Brothers that I realized, oh, this might end up being a movie after all, because the whole time I was writing it, I assumed it could never, never be a movie. Uh, uh, because of the, all the pop culture elements of the story and the way that I wanted to mash up all of pop culture and celebrate it uh, uh, in the story, I didn't think that a film adaptation would work because uh, all the licensing would be cost prohibitive. And I think that probably would have been the case. You know, either uh, if the if the script and the novel had found its way to any other filmmaker, that it uh, you know it might have gotten made into a movie, but not one that would uh, resemble my book. You know, it may have just been a uh, you know, virtual reality uh, treasure hunt without any of the uh, great pop culture uh, elements or the, you know, so many other facets of my story. I really think that it's the best possible uh, adaptation that anyone could have made of my novel. How does one get involved in a film of this size with Steven Spielberg? I mean, how was it? I just called him up and I said, hey, I heard you're making this movie and... Yeah. He'd seen your work you know, and he was just like, oh, massive fan. Ask me. Yeah. No, very mm -hmm. long audition process. <laughs> um, and the will to uh, keep auditioning and, and hopes that, you know, he might give you a chance, which in this case he did. And it's a, I mean, such a surreal experience learning that you, you're going to work in one of his films. But also the most, you know, I think something, one of the, I think it's the best experience of my life, at least as, as much as one film has taught me to this date. This isn't the first big, big film you've worked on, but... Does anything kind of compare to working with Spielberg on a, you know, a film of this kind of scale? Well, I think uh, on a film of any scale, you know, working with Spielberg is always a um, is always a privilege. And it, you know, as as an actor and a fan of his, it, it was uh, extraordinary to get the chance to work with him again. You know, it's my third time working with him, so um, uh, I feel like we're friends, which is a bizarre thing for me to say because he 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 shaped and changed my my sort of my life as a film lover when I was a kid. You know, and an adult. How was the role kind of Ogden Morrow first pitched to you? Uh, well, I'd read the book, so I knew the character of Ogden Morrow, and um, you know, I was interested to see how Zach and Ernie transcribed that from from a, a book into, or transferred it from a book into a film. Um, I knew that that relationship between him and Halliday was kind of based a little bit on Jobs and Wozniak, and uh, yeah, he seemed to me like a very interesting character. How was the role of H kind of first pitched to you? It wasn't pitched to me, uh, mostly because the whole thing was very top secret. So I got sides that were very cryptic. Um, so I, I, I saw sides before I, I didn't see a whole script. And, and that was obviously on purpose because they were trying to keep it secret. Um, I read with Ellen Lewis, who was the casting director, and Leslie Feldman, who, who also works in casting at uh, Amblin. And so Steven wasn't even in the room, thank God, or else I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. And so I read with them. They did their best to give me direction without telling me what the movie was about. They gave, then I got a call back to come in and read again. Uh, it was a similar thing. They gave me even more direction. We had a lot of fun. Then I got a call uh, from my manager that said, Steven saw your tape and, and wants you to be H and ready to play one. And I was ecstatic. Uh, but then I said, well, can I read the script now? And can I see like what the thing is about? So then I read the script and realized, like, oh, OK, so she's a girl here, and she becomes this is the person she is in the Oasis, oh, and then she becomes Iron Giant. Like, all these things I discovered. And then I read the book, and I was like, oh, wow, my head exploded even more because there's so much more going on in that world. So I didn't really know what I was planning until I got cast. So it was a little backwards. So nothing was pitched to me. I auditioned, got the role, and was told, okay, this is what you're stepping into. Were you always going to try and adapt it yourself? Uh, well, uh, I, that was part of the deal of Warner Brothers buying the uh, book rights. I had started out as a screenwriter, uh, and found that really dispiriting, and that was what motivated me to write a novel. But I was already in the Writers Guild, and I'd already had a film produced, so if someone wanted to buy the uh, the 
uh, film rights to Ready Player One, one of the caveats was that I be allowed to write the first few drafts of the screenplay so that I could influence the direction that the adaptation would take. Um, uh, so, but once you know, I finished my drafts, which were done before the book was even published. Uh, then you know, I kind of. Uh, left it to Warner Brothers to see if they could get a filmmaker uh, uh, interested, uh, which they managed to get the greatest filmmaker of all time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of it is you and Mark Ryland. How was working with him? I love working with Mark. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm such an admirer of his. I mean, I went to see him play Hamlet when I was a student, and, uh, uh, you know, he, he's an absolutely spellbinding actor, brilliant theatrical actor, and also makes that transition to film acting, which is a different proposition entirely effortlessly you know he, his what's going on inside him when you when you watch him act is kind of it, it's it's amazing how he telegraphs tiny emotions by doing very little but uh it's uh yeah it's this extraordinary skill i love your scenes are kind of in retrospect or kind of apart from the sort of scavenger hunt sense of the story mm. did you get to spend you know much time with um, with olivia and ty and the rest of the cast or was it kind of very separate yeah, I got to see them, and um, you know there there was uh, a lot of crossover. Obviously, um, um, you know, for the sake of the movie's secrets, I can't elaborate on that too much. But it was um, it was really fun to hang out with the young guys. You know, that the high five particularly. They're such a a, a great bunch of I, I, I hesitate to say kids, uh, but they are. They're they're just so cool and so laid back. I mean, I think of myself being Ty's age. And being as calm and collected as, as he is around Stephen, I couldn't have done that. I would have just been squealing. And what's it like being directed by Steven Spielberg? It's fantastic. It's the best thing in the world. I highly recommend it. Uh, he's really kind and really sweet and super patient. Um, I think that's because I think he's a father and I think you kind of have to be patient to be a mother or a father. Uh, and he was really patient with us and made sure you know we had the space we needed to play and, and to, to bring all the things that make us special to these characters. And I, for one, am super grateful to him for allowing some of me to be an, uh, an age. That's, I mean, that's the question that we, we're always getting asked, but we never get tired of answering him because he is so, he's such a joy to work with and he has such a, like a, a youthful spirit, which, which, you know, really finds its way into his films um, and bleeds into the rest of his crew and his cast. And I think that's why you, you see him you know, he, he moderates these beautiful performances that are incredibly intimate, and you, you can sometimes wonder like how someone can capture that. And it's it really stems from his. I, I feel like his the energy he puts off and the inner energy that he evokes out of other people. He is the coolest. Uh, he is just the nicest, uh, sweetest, and most enthusiastic uh, person. One of the most enthusiastic people I've ever met, and full of love and joy and uh, such a great collaborator. And you see why he's Steven Spielberg. Like, it's no accident. It's not luck, you know. It's his personality and who he is and how he uh, is able to uh, draw people together and get their best work out of him. You want to do, uh, you know, uh, the, your best that you can for him. And everybody does. Even, you know, the gaffer, people lugging cable, like, they, you can see it in their face. I'm working on a Steven Spielberg movie. And that uh, informs everything. And that's why he... I think manages to make such great films is he, uh, you know, he is like the captain of the, you know, uh, uh, of your team that you desperately want to win for him. What's it like seeing it back for the first time then when you actually see the finished thing? Um, it feels like you've been immortalized. It's very strange. Uh, the visuals are so stunning. It completely exceeded my expectations 10 times over because my imagination doesn't have the capacity to imagine anything like this. Yeah, likewise. I mean, the, the, it was the first time I've ever had the experience of watching a film I've, wor I've worked on and I was able to just find myself watching it so freely. And it's because of the immersiveness of the animation and the work that ILM turned in and how these avatars are really, their enhancements on top of the performances and on top of the, the, the characters that are you know, hiding under the avatar. And I think that really gives the film such complexity and these characters such complexity. I mean, having filmed kind of a little bit away from the story, what was it like seeing it all for the first time? Amazing, that was my first time last night. And I knew that it was going to be a visual feast. I knew that it would be an extraordinary story, well told, because of Stephen's filmmaking skill. Um, but it was quite overwhelming, and I feel like, in the in in the most in the most truthful way, it's a film that requires multiple viewings because there are several ways you can watch it. You can watch it for the story. You can watch it for the sort of the visual experience, and you can watch it to to check off the incredible attention to detail which exists. Uh, in the movie, so it, it's something that I really want to see again. I want to see it in 3D as well because 
I'm fairly ambivalent about 3D as a as a gimmick, you know, for film. I sometimes feel like, well, I can I can see 3D in the lobby of the cinema. I don't need to see it particularly on the screen if there's a good story being told. But with an immersive world like the Oasis, where you're in a a completely virtual, completely uh, fabricated world, seeing it in 3D would only enhance that experience, you know. Save the Oasis. Save the world. Players. Are you ready? That's better. I'll wave to you from the finish line. McFly. That went well.